Welcome to our lecture online. Here's another one of those problems that pushes the envelope just a little bit further than you typically will see in an engineering textbook on physics. So here we have some angular accelerations, some projectile motion put together into a mechanics problem. Let's read it. It says, at time t equals zero, a disk of radius one meter starts to roll without slipping on a horizontal plane with an angular acceleration of alpha equals two-thirds radians per second square. A small stone is stuck to the disk. At t equals zero, it is at the contact point of the disk and the plane. Later, at t equals the square root of pi seconds, the stone detaches itself and flies off tangentially from the disk. The maximum height in meters reached by the stone measured from the plane is one-half plus x over 10. The value of x is, and of course that will be in meters, and that's what we're trying to find. So let's try and envision what's happening here. So we have a horizontal plane. We have a disk. The disk has radius one meter. The velocity is equal to zero at t equals zero. So it starts from rest and then it begins to roll. As it rolls, there's a little rock attached to the bottom of the disk and it's at the contact point of the disk and the, and the plane. As the disk begins to roll, the disk will have traveled some distance to the right, like this, and that rock will now be at some point higher. And so the time now is equal to the square root of pi. And there is an acceleration, so it's not just starting from rest and just rolling, it's accelerating and it tells us that the angular acceleration is equal to two-thirds radians per second square. Now, let's convert to tangential acceleration. Tangential acceleration is equal to r times angular acceleration, but in this case r is one, so this is equal to one times two-thirds, and so this is equal to two-thirds meters per second square. So the disk is rolling along, accelerating at two-thirds meters per second square. So now, how far did the disk reach after a time pi square root of pi seconds have elapsed? So then we can say that x is equal to x sub naught plus v sub naught in the x direction times time plus one half a t squared. And so therefore x, when time is equal to the square root of three, uh, no, square root of pi, pi, that is equal to zero, because we start at zero, plus v initial at zero, which is zero, plus one-half times acceleration, which is two-thirds, times the time squared, which is the square root of pi quantity squared, and so the one-half cancels out the two, and we're left with one-third pi. So that's the distance traveled after the square root of pi seconds have elapsed which means that if the distance traveled like this is equal to one-third pi, that means the distance along the edge of the circle, or the ed edge of the disk, is also one-third pi. So if we draw a line to there and a line to the, straight to the bottom, this distance, we can say arc length, is equal to one-third pi. And of course, it is two pi r to go around the circle, r is one, so essentially two pi to go around the circle, so two pi times one-third uh, pi, so that is equal to one-sixth of a circle, which is equal to 60 degrees. So the disk will have traveled in such a way that the rock will have moved through an angle of 60 degrees. Now it says the rock detaches itself. So now essentially we have a projectile motion problem. So we have a projectile motion problem where the, the rock leaves, let's see here, here's the, the horizontal surface, so the rock leaves at a particular height at a particular angle, so it's turned at an angle of 60 degrees, the rock flies straight off like this, so that means that the angle with the horizontal is 60 degrees as well. So the rock takes off at an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal, and the initial velocity will be the velocity at that moment in time. So to find the velocity, when time is equal to the square root 
of pi that is equal to v initial uh, plus acceleration times time and of course we're going to replace that so this is equal to zero because that zero initial velocity at this point plus the acceleration of two-thirds meters per second square times the time which is the square root of pi and that is the velocity at that point so my initial velocity of the projectile will be two-thirds times the square root of pi leaving at an angle of 60 degrees but from how high well if you've traveled to an angle of 60 degrees that means that this point right here must be at the halfway point notice if this is 60 degrees then the adjacent side is the cosine and you can see in the hypotenuse is one so that means that this height right here uh, let's call it this height h is equal to the hypotenuse which is one meter the radius of the circle times the cosine of 60 degrees because it's adjacent to the angle and that's one half so that means one half meter so we're one half meter away from the center which means we're one half meter away from the horizontal plane and that's where this one half comes from so you start at a height of one half so now the projectile leaves and of course we're going to have projectile motion and we want to calculate to see how high, let's call this big H, how high did the projectile go? Well to figure that out we need to know the time in the air. How long did it stay in the air and of course if we use this as a reference height we can see how long it takes for it to come back down to this height. Take half that time that's how long it takes to get to the maximum height. So time in the air is equal to uh, y is equal to y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half a t squared. In this case, acceleration will be acceleration due to gravity, and they want us to use 10 meters per second square. All right, plugging in the numbers we know. So we start at zero reference height, end up at zero reference height. So we have final height is zero, initial height is zero, plus v initial in the y direction. V initial here we need to know v initial in the y direction which is equal to v initial times the sine of 60 degrees which is equal to 2 over 3 times the square root of pi times the square root of 3 over 2. These cancel out and we're left with the square root of pi over 3. So the square root of pi over 3 times t minus a half a g using this the minus 5 t squared so that means that 0 is equal to t times the square root of pi over 3 minus 5 t and so either t equals 0 or t equals square root of pi over 3 divided by 5 and of course that's the time that it takes to get all the way back to here so the time to reach maximum height is half of that so t to max height is equal to half of that so that would be one half times square root of pi over 3 divided by 5 which is equal to the square root of pi over 3 divided by 10. All right so now that we know how long it takes to get to the maximum height, now we can actually calculate the maximum height. So, max h. So we have uh, y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half gt squared. So now we're actually going to calculate the height reached. So the height when uh, the height y when t is equal to the square root of pi over 3 divided by 10 is equal to starting from zero reference point because we already accounted for the one half plus v initial in the y direction that would be the square root of pi over 3 times time which is the square root of pi over 3 divided by 10 plus one-half gt squared, that would be minus five times. The time elapsed is square root of 
pi over 3 divided by 10 quantity squared. All right, so this is equal to, here we have pi over 30 minus, so now we have 5 pi over 300. And so that means we need 10 pi over 300, 5 pi over 300, which is equal to 5 pi divided by 300. And so that is the maximum height gain. Now, let's go and see what we have here. So we have, the answer is 1 half plus x over 10. This here needs to equal x over 10. So we have 5 pi over 30 times 10 is equal to x over 10. Or in other words, 5 divided by 30, that is uh, 1 sixth. And so we have, this is equal to pi over 6 divided by 10. So in other words, we can then conclude that x is equal to pi, oop, terrible looking pi, pi divided by 6. Now, they want it in a decimal form, so now we have to divide pi divided by 6, so 3.14 159 divided by 6. So, the 0 0.6 goes into 30 five times, gives us uh, 30. 1, drop down to 4, that is uh, 0 0.5, 12, that's 2, 21, that would be uh, 18, that would be 3. 3 times 16 is 18, remaining 3. Uh, 35, 6 goes 35, that's almost 6 times. So, rounding off to two decimal places, I would say that therefore x is equal to 0 0.52, and that's probably close enough to make that into a correct answer. Wow. Now, let me tell you a few things before we say, wow, that's a lot of work, how would we do that in three minutes? Sure, that is definitely the case, but the first part, you have not much of a choice. You have to realize that the object is accelerating, you have to realize the acceleration is two-thirds radians per second squared, since the radius is one, that's equal to two-thirds meters per second squared. And then you have to figure out how far it travels, so you know that it travels pi over three. Then you realize that is one-sixth of a circle or 60 degrees, so you know what the position is of the rock as it then comes off the disk and starts coming out this way. And then you realize you're dealing with projectile motion. The original one half is the starting point, that's the halfway point, half the radius of the circle, all that is good. Now, there are equations that allow you to find maximum height, if you remember what they are, uh, then you can simply plug those in, or if you don't remember what they are, you need to find time in the air. Once you know time in the air, you can then calculate maximum height this way. So either way it can be done, but there are equations to find maximum height and maximum range. At this moment, I'm not from memory, I don't remember quite what the maximum height is, but I'll have to look it up. And uh, you can use that equation to make things go a little faster. You can see in some cases, memorizing those equations is actually pretty good. Uh, the way those are found, of course, is when you do this in a general format, you can come up with the equation, but because you have lack of time, memorizing what the equation is helps in a test like this. And that is how it's done.